2014 was a magical run for Albany's Lyle Thompson. He won the Tourton Trophy, broke the NCAA record for points in a single season, and was a human highlight reel. Who's going to come up with it? It's Lyle Thompson. Backhand is shot, breaks off the post, and it's in the goal. Today we take a closer look at Lyle's spiritual connection to the game, what he has to prove in 2015, and what's next for a once in a generation talent. 2014, you win the Tuorton Trophy with your brother Miles. It's the first time that Player of the Year award was ever shared. You break the record, the NCAA record for points in a single season, and you run around the lacrosse world like a rock star, and, and kids flock to you, and Lyle Thompson's big stuff. What's this last year been like for you? It's been, it's been fun. Um, just, you know, it's definitely changed me as a person. Um, you know, my, my view of, you know, who I am and, and um, how I have to, you know, approach, you know, other kids, other people. And just um, my personality, just coming out and being more outgoing and, and being there for those kids. I know now that, that, I'm, that I can make a difference on, on a kid's life just by maybe giving them an autograph or taking a picture with them. I like that opportunity. I like that, you know, I'm given the opportunity to do that. So um, I try to do it as much as I can for, for a kid. I know as a kid, I, I didn't always have that. Um, you know, I, I always had my brothers, but for someone, for someone to look up to me, you know, that much, and um, it kind of makes my day at the same time as it makes them for me to see that smile on their face. You know, a lot of people talk about me signing autographs for an hour after games, but that's, that's just stuff. You know, I'm starting to, I'm starting to, you know, um, just get used to it. But it's fun at the time. Like out in Denver, that was a, that was the craziest it's ever been. And um, I just thought it was a lot of fun, just staying, staying after in my hotel. There was a bunch of kids just running around, asking me for pictures, kind of just even hanging out with me. So, um, you know, I, I think I got the opportunity as a person to, you know, make an influence on someone's life and, and. You know, I'm going to do my best I can to, to help that. In the Native American culture, you play lacrosse for the Creator. Describe your personal spiritual connection to the game. I mean, I, I connect so much in that way. I think, I think I connect a lot more than almost every Native American player. More than my brothers, I know that. And they're, they're players who, who do too. And growing up, my father, that's, that's what my father always stressed was, you know, it doesn't matter what the score is. And that's what we're taught in medicine games too. So I think, I think some of it is cultural too. So it's not just my father telling us. It's, it's me growing up playing with a wooden stick, playing in medicine games every spring, renewing that ceremony and just knowing about the game. It, it has taught me a lot about, you know, the, the culture of this game. And then, you know, my dad stressing it, um, telling us, you know, it doesn't matter the name on the front of your jersey, your number, you know, you're out there, you're out there playing with a, a much bigger purpose. You know, I, I do that every, every game. If I find myself getting frustrated or angry, that's what I think about. Um, I think about why I play this game, who I play this game for. And um, I think that, that helps me a lot mentally. Going into, you know, big games like Syracuse, um, John Hopkins, you know, NCAA games, that spiritual part of the game really helps me, you know, stay focused mentally. Kids these days now are playing lacrosse on teams all four seasons. What was your training like as a child? You know, you, you, hear, you hear me, you know, almost every Native American talk about, you know, we're born into this game. And, um, you know, that's, that's the best way to put it right there. Right from when I was a kid, I had lacrosse stick in my hands, walking. My nephew has lacrosse stick in his hands. He was born with it. You know, there, there's other sports we try. I tried hockey, I tried basketball. Um, and, I, and I like basketball, but lacrosse, every day after school, I'd come home and it was me playing, playing lacrosse every day. No matter where I was, I had my stick with me. I slept with my stick. Um, and I think that just goes to show how important the game was to me. You know, I, I was playing in all four seasons too. Um, whether I was in, actually I was almost never inside. I was outside in the snow. My father would tell you that I would shovel off our front yard and, and I'd, I'd do it all myself just to play. 
you know, my, my brother seen that, you know, I think they, they seen a lot in me for, you know, doing little things like that, playing out in the rain. Um, and they seen how much I cared about my stick as a kid. You know, I was just a little kid and, and you know, it might have been fifth, fifth grade and they're, they're in high school seeing me like this. And I think it, it really helped them grow a connection with their stick, seeing how important um, your stick is to the game. You mentioned earlier all these kids who ask for autographs and, and want a piece of, of Lyle Thompson. If a kid asks you, how can I be great? What's your advice? My advice is, is one, to keep your stick in your hand. Um, it is the most important tool to this game. Uh, it'll ta it, it's taken me, you know, everywhere I've been today. And um, once it comes to playing, once you keep that stick in your hands, um, and you're playing every day, I think the second part is just confidence and believing in yourself. When I got to Albany, I, I, I wasn't the most confident player. I think Coach Mara really helped me with that. And then as I grew as a sophomore, junior, senior, I got to watch these freshmen grow. And um, one thing I seen was the confidence in different players. And now I'm running lacrosse camps, and you can tell right from right from the batch of kids, which ones are confident and which ones are not. Even if they're not, their skill level isn't there, you can see how much confidence plays a role in, in how hard you go, um, how much you want to learn, and just, you know, believing in yourself to become a better player, believing that, you know, you have a dream to play at a lacrosse at a high level, and, and I think that plays a huge role. I mean, now, that, that's one thing I focus on a lot is, is my mental approach to the game and, and believe in going into every single game and thinking, you know, we're going to win this game no matter who it's against. Lyle, how is college lacrosse perceived within the Native American culture? I think it's, it's, um, it's still looked at as, as a medicine game. A lot of people within Native American communities know that, you know, they know the history of the game and they know, they know what's important about it. And a lot of parents want their kids to, you know, go off and and play at the highest level, which is, you know, Division One College Lacrosse. Um, and you're seeing it a lot more within Native American com communities. They still look at the game in the same way, where it should be played a certain way. Um, and I think here at Albany, you know, it's, it's fun to watch. It's, it's medicine here. Yeah. That's, that's the way I look at it. We play a really fun style of lacrosse. And it's not only medicine for, for us playing, it's medicine for, for those people watching because, because of the way we play. You're Native American. Uh, Miles Jones from Duke is African American. You two are the faces of college lacrosse. What's your reaction to that? I think, I think it just goes to show that, um, you know, the, game, the game's definitely changing in a way where I guess it's not, lacrosse isn't looked at as you know, that rich white culture um, play, playing the game. Um, people are seeing that, you know, it, it's a fun sport and that um, everyone, everyone can play it. The other part of, you know, Miles Jones being the face of, face of lacrosse in me, um, a big part of it is, you know, the, the lower class playing the game. Um, you know, they, they're going to see the game more. They're going to you know, experience the game more. And, you know, you put a stick in as many kids' hands as you can, it's gonna, you know, it's helping grow the game. And, and to me, that's another really important thing. There's been a lot of great Native Americans who went off to play collegiate lacrosse at Syracuse, including your brother, Jeremy, who is an All-American there. Why didn't you end up at Syracuse? Well, well a lot of it came into, you know, Coach Marr really recruited me really well, me and my brother. Me and Miles wanted to go to the same school. We liked Coach Mar's style of, style of lacrosse. That, that played a huge role too. We knew we didn't want to travel somewhere really far. It was basically somewhere in New York where we wanted to go. And what we seen in Coach Mar was just a friendship right from the start. And then the next part of it was his style of play, the way, the way he's coached. Um, it's basically how we want to play, how we've always played. My father grew up coaching us on our club team, and, and we're basically still playing that style of lacrosse, um, up and down the field, 
fast and just kind of like a controlled, reckless, fun way to play lacrosse. And again, I can't, I can't really talk about how much me and Coach, Coach Mars' relationship, you know, we're, we're really close. We can tell each other anything. We, you know, we're going to be friends after college. For the rest of my life, I know he'll be someone that I can, I can always go to. I just love our connection and, and the confidence he has in me as a, as a lacrosse player. Why is that connection so deep? Right, right from when I was a freshman, he, he, he would put the ball on my stick in overtime. And I thought that went to show a lot. It, it put a lot of confidence in me. And he was just always talking to me, always coaching me. We got, the more we talked, the more comfortable we got together. And now it's to the point where, where he knows when not to talk to me, he knows when to talk to me. You know, we're joking, on a, we're joking every day at practice together. Um, we'll be picking on other people. It, it doesn't matter. You know, he, he's, he's like one of my best friends. When the ball is in Lyle Thompson's stick and he's approaching a defender, what goes through his mind? I guess, you know, I'm, I'm going to get put myself in a position where um, I'm going to score or I'm going to give the ball to someone who's, who's going to be wide open. And it, and it depends on how, how the defense has been playing me that game or what team we're playing too. You know, different people have different style of defense, so I approach different defenders in a different way. And, um, you know, I, I like to think of, think of my matchups as, you know, more, more of a chess match. I'm going in thinking, you know, two steps, trying to think two steps in front and hit of the, the whole de defense, not just my individual guy who's covering me. When you go into a matchup, there's a lot more thinking involved in, in just, you know, dodging in a reckless way. You're a Division I athlete at the highest level. You're a full-time college student. You're a father of two. What's the hardest thing about being Lyle Thompson? <laughs> um, pro probably just time management is definitely the hardest thing. Um, right now, especially, you know, the school part. School part's getting hard for me just because I'm, I'm looking to graduate on time. I'm looking to graduate this, this semester. But at the same time, I, I'm a leader on this team. And, you know, I can't really, if I miss a practice, I feel like I'm, I'm hurting the team, you know. So I feel like I have to be here. And then when I get home, there's almost no time for that schoolwork. As a father, I want to spend that time with my kids and, and um, you know, have the connection me and my father had. So, you know, it's all time management. I have to manage my time before, before the day even starts. So, but, you know, it's just a lot of, a lot of clutter. I feel like I'm, I'm important to a lot of people. And then I got my schoolwork. So um, it's just a lot of focus and a lot of time. You played with your brother, Miles and your cousin Ty for the last few years. One of the greatest attack lines in NCAA history. The statistics, the way that you guys played was unbelievable. They're not with you any longer. In 2015, what do you feel like you have to prove? I mean, I, I personally don't feel like I have to, you know, go out and prove myself as a player or anything like that. And I think it goes back to, I, I approach the game in a much different way. So, you know, I, I go into every game the same way as I did last year. Um, you know, I'm going to play my hardest. I'm going to have a positive attitude and, and in my mind I'm going to be thinking, you know, positive things. What I feel like I have to, I have to be, I have to prove as a, as a player this year is that I guess I can make my team, I can still make this team, you know, a really good Albany lacrosse team and I feel like I'm, you know, the leader of this team. So um, it's kind of on my shoulders to do that, make, you know, um, that attack line still, you know, the number one attack, attack in the country. Do you know what 354 points means? Yep. <laughs> it's the record. It's the record. Rob Pinnell's record, 2013. What would it mean to you? I guess it would just be, you know, an honor just to be ranked with, with, those, with those players who are up in that, you know, top top of the points in Division One lacrosse. You know, it's something I don't, I don't even really like to think about, you know, because the more, 
the more I, would, I think about it, the more I'm going to want it. It's, it's never been something I've wanted this year. I haven't got to that point where I think, you know, I want to get that. I need, I need that record. Um, I'm, just like I said, I approach every game the same way. I don't care how many points I get. I don't care, you know, if I break any records. Records aside, I've been on the record for saying that my Mount Rushmore of college lacrosse players, Gary Gate, Mikey Powell, Dave Petromala, Lyle Thompson, are the four greatest college lacrosse players I've seen. What's your reaction to that? Gets me goosebumps. <laughs> you know, as a kid, for me, um, you know, I, I'd play in, you know, as a kid, you play in the backyard and you're always, you're always calling who you are. You know, I'm, I'm Gary Gate, whatever. And, um, you know, I always commentated myself. And um, just to hear something like that, it, it's just something that, it makes me think of that. It makes me think of, I guess, the commentator saying really good things about you. You look at his production from a point standpoint, insanity, skill set, ridiculous. This is the creativity factor. You know, the be, stuff you can't teach. To be put in, you know, as, as one of the top, top four, you know, lacrosse players, it's, it's definitely crazy to think about. And, you know, I, yeah, like I said, it just gave me the shivers when he said it. You're a senior now. Without question, you've cemented your legacy in college lacrosse. What's next for Lyle Thompson? I'm going to, you know, play lacrosse as long as, long as I can. I'm going to stay around the game, do my best to grow the game, and play, play at the professional level. I'm going to go on, go on to the NLL and the MLL and try to exceed in, not try, I'm, I'm going to exceed in those, in those leagues. Keep doing your thing. You've been an inspiration, man. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Split dodge is really, I think, the most important dodge for an offensive player. And the reason I, I feel that way... I loved to compete. I wanted to be the best. I came to Johns Hopkins to be a national champion, a first-team All-American, the defenseman of the year, and the player of the year.